we're going to go to the Word of God, and we want you to pray for us tonight as we go to the Word of God. I stayed up last night late, praise God, uh, studying through the Word of God, and, and I studied again the same thing today, and thought, sure, that's what I was going to bring tonight. But you know, just before I left home, the Lord spoke something else to me. Praise God. So I said, yes, Lord. <laughs> Praise God. So we're going to call your attention tonight to 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, and the first verse. Do Just I one, verse 1 read. Though I speak with the tongues of men uh -huh. and of angels yes. and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Amen. We thank the Lord tonight for the reading of his word. Now, the Lord told me to bring this message tonight. And I have a little supper tonight. He is talking loud and saying nothing. Talking loud and saying nothing. You know, some people talk. They just have a gift to talk. <laughs> Amen. But you know, it's a good thing, praise God, to talk but be saying something. Some people have, uh, may we use the phrase, some people kind of rattle off at the mouth and kind of rattle off at the head. But you know, praise God, I feel like when you are speaking, you should be saying something that sounds. Amen. Something that mean something. We find that the Apostle Paul said, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And we know today that sounding brass don't sound too good. You know, praise God, if I had to sit up all night long and just listen to this, that would kind of bother me. Now, it sounds good when something else is put with it. Amen. But sound and brass, in other words, by itself, don't mean very much. So he said, and though I have the gift of prophecy and can understand all mysteries and all knowledge and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountain and have not charity I am nothing if you do praise God after all of your talk and all of your faith and all of the gift that you have if you don't have God you don't have nothing you are not nothing if you don't have God. So it's a lot of people today, praise God, is talking loud. It's a lot of people group up to talk. But you know, God is looking for a lie. It's a lot of people want to pat on their life. They say, well, I want to be like sister so-and-so, or brother so-and-so. So I want to be like them because they talk loud. So I know that they have the power of God in their life. Because, so they can really tell it and tell it loud. But all the time, hallelujah, that don't mean that a person has a great power in their life. Hallelujah, by the height of their voice. Praise God, but I found out one thing. Talking is all right. But you've got to live the life. The Lord is calling for a sin-free life. The Lord is calling for a dedicated life. The Lord is calling for a consecrated life. The Lord is calling for a prayerful life. Praise God. You know, if you just live the life, hallelujah, and, and walk upright in this sin-cussed world, your life will speak for you. Now, it's a lot of folks talking loud. But their life is not saying nothing. 
Jesus said in Matthew 15 and 8, he said, this people honor me with their lips. Didn't he say so? He said, but their hearts is far from me. Amen. So there's a lot of lip service in this day and time going on. But we find that so many people's heart is so far from God. How many people tonight, praise God, is just when you get up, praise God, to sing, you just sing because you know you can sing good. Is your heart in the song? We're talking about tonight talking loud but saying nothing. It's some people tonight is singing songs, praise God, but they don't have no meaning. I know that's right. I said they don't have any meanings. Amen. They're going by the rhythm and, and the beat. But the rhythm and the beat is not the song. The words of the song is what means everything. And oh, in this day and time, praise God, people's lives is not saying anything. We find that people is trying to sneak in a little pop now. A little pop and a little semi-Christian music. And a semi-Christian song. And nothing, praise God, that would really reach down and touch the soul. Hallelujah. But I heard God say in his word, he said, sing unto the Lord a new song. Didn't he say, praise God, praise his other Lord. Songs that would magnify and edify the body and the soul and glorify God. But we find that we're living in a day and time now. Praise God, the, the church world today is trying to mix a little bit of this and a little bit of that with Christianity. But I want you to know that, hallelujah, Christianity is like a mustard seed. It will not mix with nothing else. Hallelujah. The only thing that it can come together with in agreement is the things of God. Praise God. God is tired of lukewarmness. He's tired of the church world today sitting around on the brink today. Oh, but it's a day and time to wait on out into the deep. If you're going to live holy, live holy. Hallelujah. You know when you come out of the world, you say, goodbye world, I'm gone. Praise God. And when you come out, stay out. Keep moving on. But we find that so many people today is trying to flirt with the world. And God don't like it. Amen. God is calling for pureness. Hallelujah. God is looking for people that wholeheartedly have their mind made up to go on with God. Praise God. But so many people today is speaking loud. Talking loud. Saying nothing. Got their Bible under their arm. Saying, I know the man. So I know I know the man because I met the man some years ago. Some folks say, I met him when I was a child, and I know I met him. Well, I met a lot of folks, but I haven't seen them in a long time. Amen. Praise God. It's some people you met you forgot about. Hallelujah. Meeting the Lord and, and keeping a, a close acquaintance with him is, a, is two different things. Amen. After you have known the Lord, the Bible said you must follow on to know him. But we are living in a day and time now, hallelujah, that people, you know, they get just so far. They get just so far. And they seem like they can't go no further. Oh, but I said tonight, it's a time to seek the Lord. Hallelujah. Talk less and pray more. Mumble and grumble less. Don't do that at all. And pray. Oh, it's a time to consecrate. It's a time to set you a, a, a few hours, uh, praise God, a few minutes, 30 minutes, uh, 15 minutes, or uh, half an hour, or uh, something. It's a time, glory to God, to get along with God. Hallelujah. It's a time to go into your prayer closet and say, Lord, I just want you to bless me, bless my soul. Hallelujah. It's no harm for you to get out on your knees and say, Lord, bless my soul. You know, so many times, uh, glory to God, we be praying for others. Say, so, Lord, bless her, bless him, and bless up yonder, and bless down here, and bless in New York. But honey, it's a time to get out on your knees and say, Lord, I want you to bless me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless.
Bless my soul. Let my cup run over. It's a time, praise God, to let your cup run over. It's a time to get down there and pray and pray and pray. Hallelujah. And sweat and pray. We find that we're living in a day and time now that people want everything easy. They want to jump down on one knee, jump up on the other and holler, Amen. Bless me and my family, Lord. And get up off of their knees. But honey, it's a time for you to pray through. Hey Amen. You know, did you know a lot of folks feel like they got en enough and they don't have to pray through? Did you know it's good to get on your knees and now, Lord, give me a complete refilling? And I know that that's right. Oh, so have I so, said, so, you mean I should ask God for a refilling? Sure, you should ask God for a refilling. You know better than the Apostle Peter. Hallelujah. He went and prayed, the Bible said. He hadn't backslid, done no sin. But don't you know you need more and more and more? Do you know you don't have enough? Amen. Even though you feel with the Holy Ghost, but you can't stop there. You got to continue to pray and seek the Lord. Peter got on his knees and he said, Lord, I want you to give me more boldness that I can preach in your name. Hallelujah. And the Bible said, when he said it, the house was shaking. You need to pray till the wall go to popping. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So the house was shaken, and they received the Holy Ghost. They already had received it in the second chapter. Lift your hand, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In other words, he got a double portion. That man was talking loud and saying something. Hallelujah. He got a double portion of the Spirit of God. Oh, it means everything tonight to put your all on the altar. You know, I feel God in this day and time trying to strengthen and establish his people. Trying to dig around them. Put a little fertilizer around them. Amen, that they may continually to grow. He's pruning his people. Yes, he is. Oh, I say he's pruning his people. The Lord is getting us ready. For that great day. But the Lord, when you, when you open your mouth and speak, the Lord wants you to be saying it just exactly right. When you say, I'm living holy, be doing just that. It ain't no time to play now. Play day is over. It really never has been. But we are down now at the final stretch. I can see it, and I know it's a fact. It's later than we think. The Lord is soon to come, and much sooner than you could ever imagine. I mean, Jesus is fixing to come back here. We are down at the foul stretch. If it ever was a day and time for people to get down to business with God, say what you mean and mean what you say, and it's now. When you open your mouth and say, I'm living holy, praise God, you have set a mouthful, and the Lord expects you to do just that. He said, let everyone that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Didn't he say so? Praise God, talking loud, saying nothing. Someone get for me Galatians 5 and 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Uh-huh. Which are these? Yes. Adultery. Mm-hmm. Fornication. Yes. Uncleanness. Lasciviousness, uh -huh. yes. idolatry, yes. witchcraft, uh -huh. hatred, yes. variance, mm -hmm. emulations, wrath, yes. strife, uh -huh. seditions, mm -hmm. heresies, yes. envyings, murders, uh -huh. drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Uh -huh. Of the which I tell you before, mm -hmm. as I have also told you in time past, yes. that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise God. Now, praise God. Now we find a lot of people is talking about that they know God. But we find that their life is right here in this portion of scripture. It's right in here. You know, uh, some people can look right in here and find they say, 
But yet they say, they, if they say, I'm a Christian. I know God. I go to the house of God. Praise God, what they call the house of God. Said, so and I live for God and I work in the church. But they still, their mind is still in the flesh. Their heart is in the flesh. And they are living in the works of the flesh. Praise God. And the works of flesh are manifested, which are these. Praise God. Anything is manifested means that it's brought forth. Amen. It's practiced, practiced, and done. Praise God. So he said, uh, adultery and fornication and uncleanness and lasciviousness. We find that we're living in a day and time, praise God, that people's eyes, so many folks' eyes, is full of adultery. Amen. I said they got eyes full of adultery. Amen. Can't nobody walk down the street without their head going around. Some people just got adulterous eyes. So what kind of eyes is in? That's them quick eyes. They eyeball you and then cover the eyes. Eyeball you and look down. That's what I'm talking about. Them quick eyes. Some folks don't care who it is. They lust. You can be tall, skinny. Somebody said ugly. Amen. Praise God. Some people just have a heart to lust. But this is the works of the flesh. Adultery. And then there are some people, praise God, will take people's husbands or, or take their wives. Praise God. God don't like these things, but yet they say, I'm a Christian. How many churches tonight, praise God, that there are people there that is taking people's wives and husbands right in the church? This is a work of the flesh. Fornication is a work of the flesh. Amen. Praise God. And that, that's one thing today. It, it, it's awful and it's terrible, but you see it all on the billboards and here and there. Praise God. The young people don't have any morality. Oh, this is a sad day today. Praise God. Look, at, look down the streets today as we walk up and down the street downtown and different places. Praise God. Hallelujah, no morality. The young uh, ladies don't care how they dress. They don't care how naked they are. And they dress like that that people would lust on them. Praise God. Oh, it's a sad day and time. But this is a work of the flesh. Amen. He said uncleanness and lasciviousness. Praise God, idolatry, witchcraft. This is a witchcraft age. Did you know some people today, praise God, They'll go 200 miles to get somebody to tell them their future. And when they could come right down here tonight and I could tell it to them free. Amen. Somebody said, tell me, but Sister Mary, can you tell my future? Uh-huh. Yeah, I can tell it. I'm going to tell it to you right now. If you don't get right, if you know that you're in your sin, and if you don't get right and get your soul right, your future destination is hell. You are going to hell. Hell is hot and eternity is long. Praise God. But if you live right and live for God, you're going to heaven. Amen. So now I told it to you free. But there's a lot of people who drive two and three hundred miles to go down there to have Reverend, Mother, Sukahara to tell them their future. Amen. Say, so I want you to tell me, tell me what my husband's doing. Say, so, well, I see him. And there is another lady. There is another lady involved. When you get home, an hour after you get home. The first lady that come to your door, that's the lady. And sometimes it's your own sister. She'll show up. And then this is happening. Nothing but a demon spirit ministering to people. Amen. And then the people will come up. Oh, my sister's against me. So, honey, I heard it. 
I heard it from a true prophet. She told me the first woman come to my house, and it's got to be her. And then they'll go to grieve. Lord, I didn't want to believe my sister would do that. Do you see what condition the world is in? This is happening. Yeah, it's happening. Pray God, people, is, these things breaks up home, breaks up families. Well, we're talking about witchcraft. This is a work of the flesh. There are many families broke up because of a witchcraft spirit. Amen. Praise God. A lying spirit. Telling people, call itself, telling people their future. But I want you to know you can't make it like that. You cannot be saved and go to witchcraft fortune tellers and palm readers. Yeah, amen. You can't be saved and do that. Praise God because that is satanic inspired. Praise God. And he said, hatred. Lord, hatred. Folks talking loud, saying they know God, and full of hatred. Did you know we are living in a day and time now that folks don't want to give up nothing? They hold on to little bitty things, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. You can't be saved with hatred in your heart. It's impossible to be saved with hatred in your heart. But it's a lot of people is not going to make it because of these things. The works of the first, yet they are talking loud. But honey, you ain't, you're not saying nothing. If you have hatred and variance, that's differences. If some people is different, I don't care what you try to do, they know a way to do it better. That's variance. Amen. You can't make it like that. Emulation. To outdo. Amen. Say, so I can outdo. Amen. Said, so if you come out, praise God, with a Cadillac, I can come out with a Lincoln Continental. And if you come out with a Lincoln Continental, I'll buy me a Rolls Royce. Amen. Emulation, trying to outdo. But these things should not even be mentioned among the peoples of God. And they are not mentioned among the people of God. These are people that's, amen, just sitting around the brink. It's a different in folks living holy and the, the folks is not. Amen, praise God. Talking loud and saying nothing. And he said, envy, murder, and drunkenness, and reveling, and such like as which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, Peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Amen. These are the people here in the 22nd verse and 3rd that's really going to make it into the kingdom of God. This is the fruit of the Spirit. The Bible said, for by their fruits ye shall know them. Didn't God say that? By their fruits ye shall know them. Now, you can tell me whatever you want to. You can tell me, oh, Sister Mary, I'm just full of the power. Ooh, I feel it now. You can tell me that. But, honey, if you're not living holy, I know you don't have nothing. Amen. I know you don't have nothing. It's a lot of folks that, honey, when God anoints me to sing, uh, when God anoints me, I know that's the power I feel. But how are you living? How are you living? The Lord may be trying to convict you and save you off of your song. Lift your hand and praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Talking loud. But saying nothing. There's a lot of people. They come to church with the collar up here. Ladies. Sleeves down here. But I have honestly seen people downtown that said, you hear what I said? That said they knew the law. No sleeve, low cuts. I said that said, looking just like the world. Well, they are of the world. Now, I didn't say it was nobody from here, but I saw folks that said they knew God. Talking loud. You're just talking loud. You're not saying nothing. Your life ain't saying a thing. Did you know the world is looking for a pattern to go by? 
The Bible tells us to show ourselves a pattern of good works. Amen. And we got to be a pattern. You know, praise God, when you buy a pattern, you see something beautiful, you say, I want it made just like that. The Lord has given us an example. Jesus Christ was our pattern. And he told us to walk like he walked, talk like he talked, live like he lived. And the Bible said there was no sin found in him, neither was there any guile found in his mouth. And he left us an example that we should follow in his step. And if you follow in his step, you will live holy. Talking loud. Saying nothing. Jumping up in church, testifying loud. that I see in here. Thank you, Jesus. With your eyes shut. Amen. Praise God. Did you know, praise God, whatever you say, you got to mean it. You know, a lot of folks, a lot of people want to say they love everybody, but you, a lot of folks hate, some folks hate people. They hate the way they walk. They ain't saved. They're not saved. Amen. Some people hate the way you walk. So I just hate that little crooked step he had. You can't make it like that. Hallelujah. You, a person need to, like that need to get out. Now, Lord, look, so now just purge me. Now, if you're going to heaven, go to hell. There's no need to play around on the brink and play with God and lose your sleep. Amen. And lose restless nights. There's no need for that. If you're going to go to heaven, let's go to heaven. What about it? Praise God. Talking loud. I listen tonight as the testimony service was going on. And I thought about it. I said, well, Lord, no wonder you wanted me to bring the message talking loud. I could just hear mm, 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 mm. folks trying to tell the goodness of God, trying to tell what the Lord has done. Amen. But listen, no grown folks don't do this, hardly. But a lot of teenagers, you got a lot to talk about when you come to church. Honey, you better get your mind on the Lord. Here we be famous, just like the Lord spoke, is coming. Famous is hitting the land. Amen. And it, it can be a day that you come to church that you'll keep your mouth shut. You'll be sitting there praying the whole time. Saying, Lord, please bless me with something to eat when I get back home tonight. Lord, if I just had a slice of light green. Amen. Did you know, saints, friends, beloved friends, we are at the close of time. We are down on the final stretch. Can't you see what's happening? Had you ever dreamed, praise God, I don't know what the cause is and the reason, but have you ever dreamed that people would have to stand for a block or two just to get a gallon or two of gasoline? Amen, praise God. Did you know by this time next year, this time next year, this time before this year is gone, you could be crying for bread. All the water could be cut off. Now, oh, we got plenty of water. They turned on at Harvard, but God may turn it off. Amen. You better, people better quit this talking and yapping and talking and running off at the head and get real with God. Amen. Praise God. We don't come to church here just for a ritual and a ceremony just to be coming out here. Praise God, but we come to hear what they said the Lord. Praise God, somebody said, well, honey, I want to go to a church where prophecy is going for. I'm prophesying now. You know, a lot of people think you got to run all down the aisle and lay hands on folks, call them out and shake them and push them and, and tell them, say, yeah, that said the Lord, but then you don't have to do that all the time. I'm telling you now we are facing something and it's great. It's terrible. The thing that we are facing. Can't you, can't you see the president? Look at the president of the United States. Folk got their uh, confidence in Mr. Kyle. So, honey, he's a very Christian, dedicated man. And his sister is a minister. 
she can lay hands. She's his, she's his uh, advisor. But honey, she sure giving him a whole lot of wrong advice. This man here is teaming up with the communist nation. Have you ever seen that before? I said, have you ever seen it before? Have you ever seen a president team up and get with the communists? Just forget about what's going on back here. Have you ever seen that before? Well, can't that tell you something? Can't you see how critical we are in a crucial time? It's a very crucial time. Anything could happen at any minute. Anything could happen. We could wake up overnight and they said we're going to ration bread. This could be overnight. We could wake up overnight and they said we're going to cut all the gasoline off. Go cut the gas out of the house. They, this could happen. God tried to tell us last winter. He tried to show us how it feel. He tried his best to speak and let us know what we'll face. But do you know folks are not paying God any attention? I want to say tonight, it's a time for us to reach out and get a, a, a stronger hope, tie that spiritual rope, tie another knot in it. You might have two or three notches, but you reach up and tie another knot. And you hold on to God's unchanging hand. Because this thing is about over. It's, it's too much of people talking and talking about they know God and how they love God, but not manifesting God's love. I look at the president, how he's grinning, kissing the Russians. The Bible said, how can two walk together except they be agreed? And we know that Russia says that there is no God. They don't even believe in a supreme being. Amen. And this man can go there and lock his arms around somebody said they don't know God and sat there and smack him for three or four, five or six times. I mean, they smacked a while. I saw it on the news. I said, Lord, have mercy. What are they? We living in. Call up the great nations, China, the great communist nation, and say, yes, you have my handshake. You have my support. I'm with you. Look the way we're going. America is going downhill. And you know folks don't believe that. Children, y'all better quit talking, sitting up in church talking, loud, except you're going to be praising God. Oh, I'd love to hear you back there saying, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. That's what I want to hear you say. And I, but I, I don't want to hear you saying, look down there at Jean with that old brown skirt on. <laughs> Honey, it's time out for that. Talking loud, sitting up in church, making fun. Laughing at folks shouting. You need to be out there shouting and praising God yourself. The Bible says, save yourself from this untoward generation. Save yourself from this backers and ungodly generation. Hallelujah. We are living in a day and time now. Hallelujah. I used to hear the old people say, every tub going to have to sit on his own body. Used to hear my mother say that. I said, what does she mean? Uh, I was thinking about the wash tubs, and I didn't understand it. I understand it now. Oh, it means that you're going to have to make it for yourself. If somebody brings you to this church, witness to you and bring you to this church, and then they turn and walk away from God. If they don't be faithful in the house of God, honey, you be faithful. Hallelujah. If they bring you here and don't come but two weeks, you stay with God. Hallelujah. You know you found him. Stay with him. Hallelujah. Don't have your salvation tied up in friendship. Don't have it tied up in kinship. Amen. But tie your salvation up in Jesus. Hallelujah. Knowing one thing, I'm on my way to heaven. And you can't make me stop. Hallelujah. Talk about me. Turn around. Go back. Say whatever you want to. You can't make me stop. Because I'm on the way. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. It's one thing about it. If you get your eyes on Jesus, you'll make it there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So a lot of people have a spirit of jealousy. Can't make it with that. Whatever the Lord blesses anybody with, rejoice. Rejoice. Praise God for it. Praise God because that same God that blessed one individual, he'll visit you. He will visit you. But the Bible said, for God is no respecter person. Hallelujah. The same thing that he gives to one person, he'll give it to you. But your day hasn't come. Amen. But live and wait for your day. For it will surely come. Because if it don't come, that would make God a respected person. Hallelujah. So don't have jealousy in your heart. If some men, their wife can't speak to nobody, I'm trying to look care of you. Can't speak. Shake hands. Somebody that's passing by. How you doing, sister? All right, how you doing, brother? I saw you over there. I saw you. He held your hand, didn't he? I think he held it too long. And some folks act so, praise God, until they got the folks shaking hands. You know, some folks will shake your hand, but they shake it like this. That ain't no handshake. You grip a person's hand to shake it, but you know some folks so scared and henpecked. Lift your hand and praise God. Amen. Well, now, yes. I, well, let me say it again. I said, well, now, some brothers so hidden back. Tell they can't shake the sister's hand. They say, how you doing, sister? <laughs> because the wife have said, I saw you. What were you talking about? Maybe, maybe the, somebody went by and said, well, God bless you, brother. Sure enjoyed your testimony tonight. Yeah, well, pray for me, sister. What was that y'all talking about over there? Jealousy is cruel. Jealousy will make you accuse people of something that's not really even there. When you're looking through the eyes of jealousy. So you can't make it with jealousy. Praise God. Hallelujah. And it's uh, backbiting. Lord, have mercy. Backbiting. That's when folks talk about you behind your back. Amen. They constantly back by you. Eating you up. <laughs> yeah, that's what that means. Eating up your reputation. Eating up your personality. You know, a lot of folks say, Ooh, God, thanks, Sister So and so is so sweet. Honey, but you don't know her like I do. Yeah, yeah, but she's sweet though. You know, a lot of folks backbite and then try to cover it up. Amen. Eating up a person's reputation. A lot of people will eat up a person's morality. So what do you mean, Sister Mary? A lot of folks say, ooh, so I tell you, I've been knowing this sister for the last five years, and so she's such a beautiful person. And the Lord, ooh, so I just, she really live holy. Honey, but you don't know what she was before she got it. Eating up a person's personality. Painting a picture that that person may look on that person as what they used to be. But God is looking on what you are now. Hallelujah. Whether you was a liar or whatever you were, you were a sinner. And you were on your way to hell. There, were, there are no big sins and little sins. Every sin that's committed is a great sin in the sight of God. Amen. But there are people that backbites. They dedicate themselves to backbiting. Did you know there are some dedicated backbiters? <laughs> Amen. There are some dedicated backbiters. Some people will go 15 miles. They'll go to God. Now I'm just saying God. To find something to talk about. Yes, they will. Some folk would drive all over town. Some folk would drive, if they heard that somebody was coming by your house, they'll go by to see if they're there. 
Now all I just drove by to see is it true. Where I can tell it. Honey, you could spend that time praying. Well, you may say this is slow tonight, Sister Mary, but that's all right. I told you I studied the way in the night on something else, but the Lord told me. This evening, just before I came to church, the Lord told me. He said the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians, the first verse. So I have to do what the Lord told me to do. But I'm saying tonight, we need to knock off. If, if, if it's anybody here that's in that shape, you need to knock all that off. Get rid of it. And let's get ready to go to heaven because Jesus is soon to come. Amen. It's time out. The Lord's tired of talking. Holding things in your heart. Lord, some people can hold things for years. I mean, it's there too. I mean, it sticks on to them like white on rice. I mean, it stays. They, they will not get rid of it. But you cannot hold things in your heart and go to heaven. Amen. You got to rid yourself of everything. This is where praying comes. People that pray, this don't happen to them. This don't happen. If you pray and stay before God, nothing can stick on to you. Amen. Nothing can build up in your heart. Amen. You're going to do the things that's right if you are praying. But we find that people are doing more talking now, talking loud on the telephone. Amen. Talking about nothing. Start off talking about Jesus. A lot of folks start off, you know, when, a lot of times when people want to talk some gossip, they start to talk about what a good time we had at church. Don't you hate the devil? You know, he's slick. So, ooh, didn't we have a good time? Yes, we did. We had a beautiful time at church. Until sudden such a thing happened. That just grieved my spirit. Sister, did you feel what I feel? Trying to drag somebody else in your stuff. That's wrong. Hey Amen. You know, the devil always try to have somebody agree with him. They always want to know, did you feel it? Did you see what I saw? Did you feel what I saw? What I felt? Well, a person like that, whatever you're looking for, you see it. Amen. You see it. Pride. Self-esteem. Amen. I. I want to be seen. Talking lie. The third letter in failure is I. Is that right? F-A-I-L-U-R-E. The third letter is I. And once you ever get wrapped up in I, you're going to fail. Now, it's a lot of people today want to say, look what I done and how I can speak and how I know how to do. I know I know. There's a lot of people wrapped up in I. But you are just headed for a fall. You're just talking loud. God is not in it. Did you know what? I'm talking about talking loud and saying nothing. Somebody read for me 1 Corinthians 9 and 27. And I'm closing. But I keep, but I keep in front of my body and I bring it into subjection. Uh-huh. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should not be a castaway. Yes. Thank you. Praise God. The Apostle Paul said, I keep my body under subjection. Because after that I have preached to others, I myself be a castaway. Now you don't want to go around here and tell the folks about Jesus and talk about the Lord and witness about the Lord and say that you are living for God and be a castaway. Amen. So this is the reason why I say that it's necessary to live what you say. And don't be around, praise God, going all up and down on the street car, talking loud. A lot of people get on the street car, you hear them, you, you, you're trying to step up in the uh, street car, and you hear them before you get in there. Yes, I'm saved, and I'm sanctified, and I'm filled with the Holy 
Holy Ghost and fire. And I, the Lord is telling me to tell y'all on the bus this morning. Told me to tell you you're going to have to get right and get your soul right. And God told me to tell you, told me to lay hands on everybody in the bus and get put off the bus. Talking loud. But it's a beautiful thing. Amen. To be sweet. To be humble. You can't beat it. To live a holy, dedicated life. The life that we live is a life you can see. You can see it as we walk up and down the street. Anywhere you go, if you're going out of the city, in the city, people can see it. This is something, this is not done in a corner. It's not stuck off in a corner. We are lights. We are a neon light. Jesus said that we are a city that's set on a hill that cannot be hid. Praise God. And we are a light of the world. And the Lord has called us, praise God, to light up every corner, every city, everywhere we go, the people that we are being, that we are around, the Lord is calling us to light up that corner, wherever you are. Praise God, let your life so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And live a life for God. That people will hear what you say. Your life will demand respect. And people will hear what you say. Praise God. Some folks say, well, I can't hear what they're saying. For looking at what such and such a person do. Amen. I've alive. It's to be a light. And I want to leave this with you. I want to stress this. And leave it with you. Please. If you've ever done anything. Get closer to God. Amen. Pray more. Amen. Put this in your daily schedule. You say, well, Sister Mary, I work every day. That don't keep you from praying. The Bible told us to pray always. Hey, hallelujah. You can be on your job, but have a prayer in your heart. Amen. Because we are facing something like the world have never known. Amen. It's going to bring the big boys down. It's going to bring the rich men to their knees. Amen. It's going to cause the poor men to suffer more. Amen. It's a day and time to reach out with all your heart. Give your all to God. Somebody said put your all on the altar. Put it all on the altar. Praise God. And say, Lord, I want you to make out of me whatever you want. May it be everybody standing. I want to say tonight, there's a lot of people going to churches. You only have your, your name on the church roll. And you know you don't know God. You don't know God in the pardoning of your sins. But you're on the deacon board. Somebody's on the deacon board. Somebody's in the choir. And you know that you don't know God. You know that your soul is not right. Singing in a church choir won't take you to heaven. Working on the deacon boy won't take you to heaven. Sitting in the mother's corner on the mother's mission board won't take you to heaven. But I want you to know tonight, the only way that you'll get into the pearly gate, your sins is going to have to be forgiven. They're going to have to be washed away and put in the sea of forgetfulness. God is going to have to know you say. You know, a lot of folks say, I know I'm saved. But honey, God has got to know it. That's the one. This is what counts. The Bible said that God knows them that are here. Didn't the word say so? Praise God. And God is the one got to have your name written down in the Lamb Book of Life. Somebody said, well, Sister Mary, I put it on the road at St. Hugh and St. Mount Hero. I put it on the roll a long time ago, but it is it on the roll in heaven. Everybody bow your head. This is what counts. Is your name on the roll in heaven? Have it been written down? Or are you just talking loud in your life saying nothing? If you quit doing nothing that you've ever done, you will not say you need God in your life. 
I want everyone tonight that don't know God in the pardon of your sins. I want you to step out in the nearest aisle to you and walk down here tonight. And I'm going to pray with you and believe God with you tonight. God is going to save your soul. Write your name down in the Lamb Book of Life. Come on down and let us pray with you. Saints, I want everyone praying here tonight. Talking loud. Saying nothing. You know your life is not saying nothing. You know you haven't quit doing nothing that you've always done. You need God in your life. You need God. You need God to peace, speak peace to your dying soul. We are facing something now. The task is great. It's going to be hard. I said it's going to be hard. We are facing the day that the saints of God, no doubt, will have to eat out of each other's bean pot. You need God in your life. I say you need God in your life. Come on and let God save you tonight. I feel God tonight speaking. God is calling you. He's calling you to repent us tonight. The spirit and the bride says come. The Lord is calling you to repentance. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you get God in your life, I heard him say in his word, he said, because you kept the eye of my patient, you kept it. I'm going to keep you from that hour of temptation. That's coming up on the whole earth. To try those that are on the face of the earth. You need God tonight. The Lord is calling you. The Lord is calling you tonight. The Lord is calling you. Come on and let God save you. It's somebody else here tonight. You know that you need God. You have professed that you know Christ and you know you don't know it. Talking loud. Saying nothing. Come on tonight and let God save you. I feel tonight that convicting power. The Lord is talking to you and I know he is. He's talking to somebody else here tonight. He's telling you to come. He's telling you to come. Come on and rededicate your life to God. Somebody need to rededicate to God. Come on and rededicate your life. You need all you can get for the hour that we are facing. You need it. You need it. Somebody need to make a new tonight. Hallelujah. You need to renew your life and you know you do. Hallelujah. This is the night. I feel the Lord is going to do something special. This is the night to renew your life. Oh God. Hallelujah. Time is slipping up on many. I said time is slipping up on many. A time like we never know. 